you were actually at the World Science Festival about, I think it was 10, 10 years ago, having a conversation prior to the discovery of the Higgs. And I thought I'd just show you a little, little <laughs> clip from that, uh, if you don't mind. So can you just run that, that little... Uh... The worst scenario, as far as I'm concerned, would be that uh, the LHC sort of completes the standard model and, the, and doesn't do anything more. So in the standard model as it stands, uh, we need this cosmic molasses that uh, was, was mentioned. Uh, we don't know what it's made out of. The simplest idea is that it's made out of one new particle, this so-called Higgs particle. And that could be true. And then you've, you've accounted for the missing ingredient of the standard model, and that would be it. And that would be... Uh, uh, Horrifying. Monica? Well, I think there's, uh, there's pretty much two scenarios where I would end up at McDonald's. And that is um, that if we discover the Higgs and the Higgs only, which is uh, Frank's worst case scenario and also mine, so far every collider experiment we have is really, you know, has predicted this and we measure it. It's predict standard model predicts this and we've measured it. Standard model, and so. The success is our curse. Yeah, yeah, success is our curse, exactly. And, and so I think from the experimental perspective, we're really sick of the standard model. Um, so to just, <laughs> to just continue to measure the standard model, which would be a Higgs and Higgs only scenario, um, would be frustrating. So, so you said... <laughs> I, uh, so at the I, beginning... I guess I'm going to have to go to start working at McDonald's. That's right. So at the beginning <laughs> of the clip, you said there's a scenario you'd wind up at McDonald's. You're not yeah. at McDonald's. <laughs> I'm so I'm McDonald's. assuming that in the second part of our discussion, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So 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 let's let's think about how we go beyond and how we've tried to go beyond these ideas, and and to sort of start that discussion, you know, Nima, you pointed out that the standard model has a sense of both simplicity and complexity, sort of depending on how you look at it. And we were looking at it just graphically with the, the particles arranged in nice little rows and columns. If you actually look at the equations underlying the standard model of particle physics. And you just like write them all out. This is what the equation looks like, yeah. which certainly has a, a sense of complexity uh, associated with it. It's sort of hard to imagine that, you know, after you know, a certain number of days and nights, the Lord simply said, let there be the standard model Lagrangian. <laughs> yeah. you know? um, so now you can also say to me this is misleading because this is the most naive way of writing out the equations. And what we have found over the course of many decades is that symmetry is sort of an important way of being able to repackage our understanding in a way that really simplifies and allows us to shine a light going forward. So Joe, can you say a little bit about symmetry sure. and, 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 and how, for instance, it helps us to understand mm -hmm. this better and illuminates the path going forward. Yeah, so it's, symmetry, of course, is something we're familiar with in everyday life. Snowflakes have interesting symmetries. Uh, a diamond is a good example of, of, of symmetry in physics. You know, what's the difference between a diamond and the graphite and a the pencil? They're both made out of carbon, but the difference is that diamond is in, in a beautiful crystal lattice symmetry, and, th and that's what gives diamonds its special properties. And so symmetry in, in the physics world, it it's controls the physics properties of the things that you're talking about. So this happens in the subatomic world as well, and, and, and when we're talking about symmetry in the standard model, we're actually talking about principles that control how the standard model works and actually make it much simpler than it could otherwise have been. And that's why those complicated equations can actually be expressed almost in words in terms of a few symmetry principles. In fact, you can even use the, that symmetry to put those equations on a coffee cup, exactly. as, as has there been you done. Go. I think it, it, it's, worth, it's worth really stressing that these, uh, it's a, kind of an unusual sort of symmetry that we're talking, there are some important differences, we don't have uh, time to really get into it, but, uh, but this very simplicity and, and the fact that there's a certain kind of symmetry that uh, is useful for theorists to describe this physics has everything to do with this two not equal to three business. Yes. It yes. has absolutely everything to do with the fact that uh, we're only allowed this tiny menu of elementary particles when they're massless and that, that mass is a big, is a, a big perturbation. So yes. trying to describe massless particles, which we 
think we should be doing in some approximation when we go to very high energies. That's what forces you to do these incredibly simple, compact-looking formulas. And these formulas are really directly reflecting the underlying principles of space-time and quantum mechanics that uh, govern everything. So, mm -hmm. so it's, uh, there's, there's, not very, there's no real veil between these, uh, these uh, remarkable, simple um, uh, formulas and these grand underlying principles of uh, 20th century physics.